Hey, good morning. How you doing, Facebook Live family? This is Brother Leon, and we are going to do our we are going to do our forgiveness Friday. So I just want to say welcome. I also want to say, hey, what's it's been? Hey, I don't know how you guys feeling about this weather right now, but I broke down and I uh I had turned that heat on last night. Seriously. But um, we're going to talk about um, forgiving our parents and giving grace to our parents and parenting. So I just want to admonish you guys that today is going to be a special day. It ain't going to be like last week. I know last week it was, I call that the, the, the ratchet edition of, of Forgiveness Friday. But I will say this, that this is definitely going to be different. I know um, next week I will not be doing this next week. Um, next Friday. No, hold up. Yeah, I will be doing this next Friday. I will, yeah, we'll be wrapping up next Friday. So um, I just want to say it's been an adventure. It's been a ride. But I also want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for giving me your attention in all of this. And so, um, you know, I, 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 I count it a privilege. I count it an honor. And I want to just give honor to God. I want to give... Uh, all honor goes to him. All praise goes to our Lord because without him, we would not have forgiveness. We would not have redemption. So I want to say, you know, right now, right now, you know, this is the time. This is the season. This is the season of harvest. This is the season of breakthrough. But it begins with you. It begins with you. It begins with your heart not being clouded. It begins with your heart being clear and being focused towards the Lord. Because at the end of the day, that's all we got. Seriously, that, that is all we have. All we have is the Lord. All we have is his word. And God and the word is, is more than enough. So I'm here to tell you right now. We're getting ready to start this right now. All right? We're going to go into prayer. And I have a song that I'm going to play by my uh, favorite artist, Smokey Norfolk. It's called Always Remember. I do not own the rights to this song. As you may know, I don't own the rights to none of these songs I play. But I like to use them when I am uh, praying, when I'm ministering, before we go in. in. So, hey, just uh, relax and we go and pray. Oh, wrong song. Here we go. Rada, bedede shebinde. Hura basha re menengi asha braba kodoshe. Lendere bede ashu robo darabakata. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for forgiveness. We thank you, Lord God, for restoration. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for reconciliation because, Lord, we know that you are reconciling the hearts of the fathers. You are reconciling the hearts of the mothers. You are reconciling the hearts of the children. And we decree right now in the name of Jesus that this will be a season of restoration, healing, deliverance, and reconciliation. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the word of reconciliation, and we thank you, Lord God, for the ministry of reconciliation. We thank you, Father, Lord God, that love covers a multitude of sins. We thank you this morning, Lord God, that, Lord, as you have forgiven us, so shall we begin to forgive ourselves. And we thank you, Father, Lord God, that you died on the cross so that we do not have to crucify ourselves with self-hate, with regret, with guilt, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I decree over this audience right now, freedom, in the name of Jesus. Freedom in mind, freedom in their body, freedom in their heart, freedom in their emotions, freedom in their households. Freedom, Lord God, when it comes to their children, Lord God, not being bound by the opinions of men or by what other people do or how other people raise their kids, but what you have given them. The wisdom that you have given them, the wisdom that you have placed on the inside of them. So, Father, we thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we say amen and amen. In Jesus' name. So, hey, we're going to go into this. I'm going to turn this off, and we are going to go in. So, this morning, we're going to talk about forgiveness. We're going to talk about forgiveness, forgiving our parents, 
and also giving grace to our parents so that God can can take us and and use use us to have a bright present but also even have a brighter future because the Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house the former house is where you came from where you were born but the latter house will be where your kids are going and a lot of times we as parents you know we we come from upbringings and and we come from past and we come from families I ain't gonna lie, if you had the choice to choose some of them, probably some of them you wouldn't have chose. You know, some of the background, some of the way that we grew up, we probably wouldn't have chose that if we had any choice in the matter. But the one thing that I will say is this, is that God knows, is that God is in control and he can take wherever you are and lead you to where you need to be. I'm gonna say that again. God can take wherever you are and put you in the place where you need to be. Because God, I'm going to tell you, man, it's something about God that he is like the ultimate GPS. If you're willing to yield to him, if you're willing to listen to him, God is all that. And I will say, I will say this one thing is that, um, you know, when it comes to redirecting our lives, God is an expert at it because we can go off track. But just like a GPS can reroute and get you back on the right tra uh, path and on the right track. So can God. God has a way of turning things around to work towards your good. And, and that's why the Bible says that all things work together for our good. So you might be in a position where you feel like you're lost. You might be in a position where you feel like, Lord, I don't belong. I don't even feel like I belong in this family. But God is using you to be able to lead that family, to be able to bring healing to that family and also be able more more than able to bring reconciliation because that's what it's about it's about the it's about the generations it's about it's about the seed and i'm gonna tell you right now that's why we had that's why the devil has come he has come for the seed he has come for the generation he has come for the legacy that is why we have to allow god to heal us we have to allow god to begin to bring deliverance unto us because if we do not allow god to bring deliverance and healing unto us how is it that we are in a bondage, but then our sons are in the same bondage after us. And that's a travesty. And so, you know, we as men of God, we as, as fathers, we as husbands, we got to begin, man, hey, blaze that trail. We got to begin to say, hey, it is not going to be that way with my sons. It is not going to be that way with my daughters. I may have come from poverty, but my kids will not know the sting of poverty. My kids will not know the sting of brokenness. My kids will not know the, the generational curse. Because I'm going to tell you right now, man, there are curses in the bloodline, but you as a man, you as a husband, you as a father have the power and the authority to break that thing. But it begins, it begins with you being able to forgive where you came from. And I'm going to say it again. You have to begin to forgive where you came from. You have to begin to say, Lord, I choose this day to forgive my past. I forgive my ancestors. I forgive my past. Because when you can forgive your past, you have a bright future ahead of you. And you will not be bound and you will not be bogged down with the things that, that slow us down. You will be able to say, you know, hey, I'm getting rid of the sin and the weight that does so easily beset me. And a lot of times it comes from guilt. A lot of times it comes from regret, regret from where we came from, regret on how we were, were raised. But the one thing I'm going to say, you know, coming from a different perspective, looking at my parents through adult eyes, because a lot of times, man, we just don't know. When we're growing up as kids, we just don't get it. We just don't see the struggle. A lot of times, man, we... You know, as as adults, we begin to see from the eyes of our parents. And I really didn't begin to see what my dad talked about and what my mom talked about until I became um, a parent. Seriously, until I had a son, I didn't know what my dad talked about until I had a son of my own. And so, it, you know, it begins you you begin to see. And if you start digging into family history, you start to see, you know, Parents, they only give you what you what they have. They can only give you what they have. And so, and, and the fact that they can only give you what they have, a lot of times, 
it is, it is um, you know, sometimes it's good. And I'm going to say a lot of times it, it can be bad. But the crazy part about it is that when they give us what they have, they give all of themselves at times if they know how to. Because some men, I'm serious, and this is what amazes me about man. This is what amazes me about certain men is that they can come from brokenness, but be the type of father, be the type of man who brings healing, who brings restoration, who brings reconciliation. And I asked a question to uh, a lot of guys. I said, hey, man, you know, with the upbringing that you had, how is it that you were able to not be where you came from? How, how is it that you were able to succeed in the thing that you did not see? And the one thing that I've seen is that they always said, I chose to love. I chose to forgive. And God gave me the willpower to do it. And so that's what I want to tell you guys is that God, he gives us the ability to be able to get past certain things, but we have to be able to forgive them. We have to be able to say, like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. There are a lot of times that there are parents who are struggling with addictions and because of these addictions, you know, they can't successfully raise kids. You got kids raising themselves. You have children who have to be the surrogate father, who have to be the surrogate mother, uh, you know, to their brothers and sisters and so forth because mom is not available, dad is not available, or dad may be absent. And that is a problem that we are facing in our community right now. We have absent men. And it's not just in the black community. It's in every community because there is an attack on man, there is an attack on the family of man. And so what I want to tell you guys right now is that it begins with us. It begins with us. The Bible says that whosoever sins, ye remit, they are remitted, meaning basically they're white clean. But whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. You keep that. You keep it all. And so the thing is, is that if you do not forgive, if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. So I'm going to tell you right now, hey, you can say I don't forgive them, but how is God going to open up the doors and bless you when you don't forgive them and you don't even forgive yourself? You don't forgive yourself for your past. You don't forgive yourself for the way that you were brought up or you don't even have forgiveness for your parents. But the one thing I will say is that you got to give them grace and you got to give them forgiveness. And the one thing I will say about grace, we always have the... The, 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 I will say generic definition is God's unmerited favor. But I will say this, grace is be, you know, God doing or grace doing what you cannot do for yourself. And I will say that right now, because there are a lot of things that grace has done that we cannot do for ourselves. And that is, you know, give that blessing that is you know, wipe away the slate because the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, I have taken your sins and I have remembered them no more. Your sins may be as red as scarlet, but God is saying today that he is able to make them whiter than snow. And the one thing about forgiveness, forgiveness is not just for you, but it's also for where you're going. Forgiveness is prophetic, and I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness is prophetic because if you look at the testimony of Jesus, it says in the book of Revelations that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. All the sin, all the sin was laid upon him, and what he said was, Father, forgive them. I'm going to say it again. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And a lot of times, we as people, we have to get to the place. We have to know that if God has forgiven us, then I need to forgive myself. I don't care how, how messed up you may be. I don't care how you may have blown it. But I will tell you this day that God, he is not mad at you. That God, he doesn't have a grudge against you. And for one thing, no matter what you've done, God will always call you son. God will always call you son. Hold up. Let me adjust this right fast. Yeah, let me adjust this. Here we go. Sorry about my hand. <laughs> God will always, he will always call you son. And so the one thing that I will tell you is that when you have unforgiveness, you 
are your, your soul is on fire. Your soul is on fire with hurt. Your soul is on fire with ha hatred. Your soul is on fire with bitterness and rejection. And the crazy part about it is that some people have the tendency to say, I'm going to use that fire as fuel. But the one thing I will tell you is this, is that unforgiveness is not, and I'm going to say it again, unforgiveness is not a clean burning fuel because the one thing that when you're burning fuel, you're using it as fuel. A lot of times, man, when you're burning it, it's giving off, it could give off toxic uh, fumes. When you're burning it, it could give off all kinds of residue. And as you're burning it, you might be using it, but it's giving off something that's toxic. And you have to also look at that because a lot of times when we say, hey, I'm going to use the unforgiveness as fuel, you don't know how toxic you are around other people. And that's the God knows truth, because at the end of the day, you may be using the, uh, the, the, the unforgiveness as fuel to try to motivate you to get you to where, where you need to be. But here it is. You done stabbed up other people. You done stomped on other people. You done walked on all kinds of other people because you did not um, allow forgiveness to come in and heal you. And you became toxic because you decided to use it as fuel. And the one thing about using things to burn is fuel. A lot of times we can burn ourselves out and our intentions may be good, but sometimes the ends just don't justify the means. So I will say this again. You could try your best to use it as fuel, but you'll either end up giving off something toxic or you'll end up burning yourself out. You'll end up burning up the components on the inside of you. And here it is. You're at a point in your life where, hey, you got there. But now you can't even enjoy it because, hey, it done made you sick. It done burnt up parts of you that you ain't going to never be able to get back. And if you do get them back, it's going to take you twice as long. So I will tell you this, that you have to get to the place where you do not allow unforgiveness to be used as fuel. But you allow, you take the unforgiveness. You ask God, Lord, take it out of me. And God will begin to take out the stony heart. And give you a heart of flesh. It says it in the book of Ezekiel that I will, I will take out of you, I will take out the stony heart and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall do them. You're going to do the word of the Lord when you will to the word of the Lord. You're going to be able to obey and focus on the word of the Lord when you yield to it. And so what I want to say right now, going back to the whole thing about grace, is that grace is, is, is a two way street. Grace is not one-sided, and a lot of times some people will make you think, yo, just give me grace, but sometimes, yo, that grace is two is a two-way street, man. Yo, just like love is a two-way street, grace is a two-way street, and you have to get to the place where, hey, you know, I'm not going to allow myself, I'm not going to allow myself to get to a place where I'm not being able to give grace, because when you can forgive from the heart, when you can give grace, when you can say, Father, bless them, when you can say, Father, I choose to forgive, you are setting yourself not only for freedom, but you are setting yourself up for blessing. Because when you can bless those that curse you, when you can bless those that have allowed the, the generational curse through ignorance or even sometimes even through knowing, when you can do that, when you can bless them, forgive them, you can take the word of God and cut the tie. You can take the word of God and cut the, uh, and cut the chain. And I'm going to say this right now, that the spirit of shame is breaking off of your family right now. That the, that, the, that the name that you were given, that the name, the nicknames, the shame, the things that people labeled on you in the name of Jesus. I see chains breaking in your household right now. I see chains breaking off of you, the chains of the past, the shame, the guilt, the regret. That came with where you came from and even some of the things that you participated in out of ignorance. I am here to say to you right now and declare and decree over you right now that God has given you a new name. And that he has removed the shame and that he has removed the burden in the name of Jesus. The burden of that nickname, the burden of the weight of the reputation. Because a lot of times when it comes to family names... The reputation that is behind that name, the reputation that is behind that name is so grievous that you don't even want to identify with it. I'm going to tell you, seriously, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to be transparent. I, my own upbringing, I purposely 
named my son a different name because I saw what all the guys with my name did and I saw that I didn't want that. I didn't want that for my son. I got tired of it with myself because I saw, you know, the things that I battled with and I did not want that life for him. So I purposely named him something else and God brought me to a place where I had to get to the place in him that I had to redefine, that I had to make, make up in my mind that I was going to redefine myself by the word of God, that I was going to redefine myself and redefine my name and redefine my character by what he said about me and not where I came from and not what other people did with my name. Seriously, because, I mean, it was, you know, had, had a Leon on my mom's side, had a Leon on my, on my, on Leon on my father's side. His name was Leon. My name was Leon. I had an uncle. His name was Leon. And the one thing that I saw, I'm like, I, I don't want that. I'm serious. I didn't want that. I didn't, I didn't want, you know, the things that we've done, where we came from, how we lived, how we treated our spouse. I didn't, I didn't want that for, for my son. What I wanted for him was greater. What I wanted for him was better. And so what I named him, you know, I named him after my favorite prophet in the Bible and I also named him after one of my favorite ministers. And I, and, and I decreed over him that he was going to be a healing prophet. Seriously, I decreed over him that he was going to be a healing prophet. And on his 13th birthday, I laid on him, man. I laid hands on that boy. And I'm going to lay hands on him again on, on his 18th when he graduates and so forth. Um, I laid on him and I began to bless him. I began to decree over him and, 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 and break the curse and begin to say over him that he will not be where we came from. And so... Um, you know, the one thing I will say is this, is that, man, God is more than able. God is more than able, you know, to turn things around, to turn families around, to turn lives around, to turn hearts around. And God, what he did for me is that he began to show me a new, a new me. And what he began to do with my son is that he began to align him and put him in a place. And I'm going to tell you, man, he's successful. He is successful. He is doing more at his age than I did. And I thank God for that. And so, you know, even when it came down to the school, he didn't even go to the school that I went to because everybody in my family, even my grandparents, went to Howard High School in Wilmington, if you know what I'm talking about. So I just want to tell you guys right now, man, that God is able to turn it around. And so, you know, I have a scripture that I want to read. Here we go. And it's out of 2 Corinthians 5, and I'm reading 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Seriously, the word of reconciliation. So, you know, the one thing that I see in that is this. I'm going to go over it again. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation to the wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto, unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. What is the word of reconciliation? The word of reconciliation is this father, forgive them. What is the ministry of reconciliation? Go and do likewise. When Jesus talked about the, um, gave the parable of the, of the uh, Good Samaritan, he said at the end of the parable, go and do likewise. And so what we have to begin to do is that we have to begin to give grace. We have to begin in the name of Jesus to bring reconciliation to our fathers, reconciliation to our families, reconciliation to our mothers. And that word of reconciliation is this, Father, forgive. 
And when you can say, Father, forgive, then that grace will begin to do things that you cannot do for yourself, which is free yourself and bless those who came before you so that you can bless those who are coming after you, so that you can be the blessing to your children, so that you can be the blessing and, and the path path uh, the path the clearer, to clear the path for your grandkids. Your grandkids don't have to know the bondage that you came from, neither do your kids. So it's totally up to you right now what you're going to do. So, yo, hold on for one second. I got to blow my nose. Forgive me. <laughs> Woo! Man. Mm. All right. Coming back. Back in the picture. Nah, man. I'm, I'm not trying to be having y'all clown me and say, yo, man, you know Brother Leon, he's doing the thing and his nose running all over the place. But... You know, like I said, you know, you have to be that that trailblazer. You have to be the one who can be able to give grace because I believe thoroughly that when you can give grace to your parents, that grace will do for you what you could not do for yourself, which is free you so that your kids don't have to know that bondage. Your grandkids don't have to know that bondage. You know, you can be the one who came out of the projects, but they don't have to know the projects. They'll be like... My mom, you came from here? Yeah, baby, I came from here. This is where my mom grew up at. Because all they know is the latter house. And that's what I mean when I say that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. Because they don't know that side. And it's a blessing when they don't know that side because you did all the toiling. You did all the work. You did everything that you could possibly do so that they don't have to go through that. So I want to encourage you guys, and we're going to pray, and then I'm going to end this. I decree right now in the name of Jesus that you will come into a season of forgiveness, that not only will you come into a season of forgiveness, but you will be forgiving. And this is not the time. I, I see that this, when you yield to this, that you, that God is not going to say, be a doormat. Seriously, you are not being a doormat when you yield to the spirit of forgiveness, when you yield to the work of forgiveness, when you yield to the healing and the deliverance work that is found in forgiveness. It is not about you being a doormat or allowing yourself to be used by people. But what I want to say this in the name of Jesus is that you are sowing the seeds of your own deliverance. And I will say this, that when you choose to have unforgiveness, when you choose not to forgive, you are forsaking your own righteousness. You are saying, basically, Jesus, what you did on the cross was not good enough because I choose to not forgive. I choose not to forgive. And so I choose not to forgive. I am basically saying your crucifixion, your sacrifice wasn't good enough. And I choose to stay in the bondage that I'm in. I choose to stay in the jail cell. I choose to stay in the hatred. I choose to stay in the hurt. I choose to stay in the flames because I believe that in the flames that I'm going to be made in sparkling gold or that the flames of unforgiveness and the flames of choosing not to forgive are going to make me better. No, my friend, it's going to make you worse. And what's going to happen is those flames, because they're hellish flames, they're going to consume you and burn you up. And the one thing about hell is that hell never gets tired. Hell always consumes. Hell has a lust that it never gets enough. And that fire cannot be quenched. That fire is not a purifying fire. That fire is a destroying fire that burns up everything that it is given. And you can say to yourself and delude yourself and, and deceive yourself and say, I'm going to use it as fuel, but you're going to burn yourself up and you're going to burn up the people and the things around you and you're going to become toxic. So I tell you right now and I admonish you in the name of Jesus that you choose forgiveness, that you choose to forgive, that you choose to forgive what happened five years ago, that you choose to forgive the offenses, that you forgive those who weren't guardians over you, who did not guard you, that you choose to forgive those who did not operate in their proper role because we have parents who could not operate in their proper role because of the hurt that was on them.
because of the bondage and the addictions that they were experiencing. They could not be good parents to you, but God, he brought you to a place where you survived all of that. And I'm going to tell you this, even though God has given us survival mode, survival no, so mo, uh, excuse me, survival mode is not a way of life. And I'm going to say it again. Survival mode is not a way of life. And I will say this right now is that you have to get to the place where you live by faith and not by survival mode. Because survival mode will have you do whatever it takes to get over. But when you live by faith, you have standards. You're not going to, say, you're not going to do any old kind of thing that's going to violate your conscience and violate the word of God. So I'm here to tell you right now is that you have to begin to forgive. It starts with you. You got to forgive yourself and you got to forgive the people that you came from. You got to forgive your blood. You got to forgive your family. You got to forgive those who you were raised with so that your kids can make it. And, and I'm going to say this right now, even when it comes to parenting, you got to forgive your children because sometimes we can get to a place in our parenting that you know, I've given my kids a good life, but they still, you know, want to run out here. They still want to run out here and act like they ain't got no sense. They want to run out here and, and, and not even, you know, act or even do what I taught them what was right. You got to give them grace and you got to forgive them. And I'm going to say this, man. Some kids, the only way that they're going to learn it is that life has to show them. And you have to be okay with your kids suffering. You have to be okay with your kids, you know, making their own decisions, because at a certain point, your kids are going to make their own decisions, seriously, and you got to be okay with that, you can't control everything, and you can't fix everything, some of you parents, man, yo, you ain't a parent, you puppet master, you want to control everything about your kid's life, and the crazy part about it is that that is a hindrance and that is a crippling effect to your children because when you die and, 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 and you go home to be with the Lord, how are they going to make it? How are they going to be able to function when you are not gone? The role of a parent is this, is that you are a temporary assignment to me. You're going to go out here and have a family of your own and I'm going to show you why you're here, the things that are necessary in order for you to make it so that I can know that when I close my eyes, when I close my eyes to go home to be with the Lord, I know that you're going to be okay and that you're going to make it because I taught you. I taught you. I taught you. I gave you a life that you can operate and be successful even if I'm not around. And that is the goal of every parent. That should be the goal of every father is that I want my kids to be able to make it even if I'm not here. I want my kids to be able to make it and be successful and help their mother even if I'm gone. Even if I'm going home, going on home to be with the Lord, or even if both parents are gone, you have to be able to put within yourself and put within your kids that, yo, no matter what, you guys are going to make it. You guys are going to make it. And you have to be able to train them now so that when they are gone, that when you are gone, when they're going up out of the house, that, hey, you're going to have to parent by faith and that you're going to have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I've raised them that they are going to be successful because here's the thing. A lot of times, man, you know, we, we buddy our kids, you know, we are, our our sons of our, our sons of our best buddies and our, our girls become our girlfriends. And the crazy part about it is that it, sometimes it can get twisted and we get to the place where now, you know, Oh, wow. Hold up. Just had a call. I hope, I hope this didn't cut off. I pray to God this didn't cut off. But like I said, there can be familiarity. And uh, I just want you guys to know, man, that God, he gives us grace that we can raise our kids to be successful and not be what we were. So I want to admonish you guys. I want to say, you know, God is more than able. And be encouraged. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you for Forgiveness Fridays. I thank you, Father, Lord God. And I just pray the blessing. I pray the blessing over your home. I pray that peace and love will be in your home and that the spirit of the Lord will begin to walk in every room, that the angel of the Lord will begin to walk in every room in the name of Jesus, and that you will begin to see the hand of the Lord even as you sleep, that you begin to see the peace of God even as your kids come in and out of your home. And I break the power. I break the power of addiction. 
I break the power of guilt. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break the power and the sin of grief and regret in the name of Jesus. I break the power of living up to an image in the name of Jesus. I break that power because you are not called to live by an image, an image given by media or an image in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in the mind. But you were created to live by the image of God. You were created to live by the word of God because the word of God says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But a lot of you have been been living by a twisted image of how you think things should be and how a family is supposed to be that a child cannot make mistakes and that you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. And you put all types of bondage and burdens on your children. And so what I'm here to say right now is that that thing is being broken. Break it in the name of Jesus. We break those images in the name of Jesus. We break them right now in Jesus name. The image is broken in Jesus name. The negative images are broken in the name of Jesus. The images that were spoken by words, the images that you cannot live up to, those things that you cannot live up to, those high expectations that you cannot live up to, those things are broken in the name of Jesus. And I decree in the name of Jesus by the power of God and by the power of his word that you are wonderfully and you are uniquely made in Christ Jesus in the image of God. In the image of God, begin to see the divinity on the inside of you. Begin to see the Christ that is on the inside of you and begin to bless yourself. Begin to bless yourself. Begin in the name of Jesus to call, to call forth, to call out in the name of Jesus. Those God qualities say this with me right now. I call forth in the name of Jesus, the love of God. I call forth the love of God on the inside of me in my spirit. The love of God that's on the inside of me, I call it out in the name of Jesus. And I come in agreement with the love of God, the love of God that removes the burden, the love of God that, that, that covers a multitude of sins, the love of God in the name of Jesus that makes my faith work because faith works by love. I call for it now in the name of Jesus. Say that with me. I call for it now in the name of Jesus. Faith works by love. Say that with me. Faith works by love. And my love works my faith. My love works my faith. And I choose this day to love. Choose this day to love myself. I choose this day to be thankful. I choose this day to be grateful. And I choose this day to be free. And I choose forgiveness. I choose it right now for myself. I choose it for my family. I choose it for my children. I choose it for my grandchildren. I choose it for those who have wronged me, I choose it. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you. So I want to say, hey, it's been a blessing. I thank you for Forgiveness Fridays. We did this. We did this so that you can go and have a Freedom Friday so you won't have a Freaky Friday. You don't have those twisted uh, transfers. And so, you know, I want to encourage you guys that, that, Forgiveness is a lifestyle. Seriously, forgiveness is a lifestyle. And I want to say that uh, that you can you can you know, you can make it seriously. You can make it and that you can be blessed and you do not have to be given over to unforgiveness. So I'm going to finish this I'm trying to think I'm getting ready to go out of the country in a few. I wonder if I mean we'll have time. You know what? I may not have time to do one next week. So what I'm going to do is we're going to end it. But if the Lord gives me something, um, you know, maybe I might be able to do something before I leave. We'll see. But I want to tell you guys, it's been a pleasure. Um, hey, if you haven't gotten my book, Let No Man Put Asunder, Kick the Clergy Out Your Bedroom, I want to encourage you to get my book. Right now, I'm actually working on a workbook for the book that is out right now because what the Lord put upon my heart is to start doing curriculum and start doing uh, conferences when it comes to the content that is in the book. So that is what we're going to be doing next. 
we're going to be doing curriculum so we can do conferences and seminars. And so what Let No Man Put Asunder is, is a book on how to reclaim your marriage and have it free from theologies, convictions, and beliefs that are not biblically based, but they are projected by clergy. So I want to, you know, encourage you guys to pick up the book. It's on Amazon. It's in Kindle form. It's in paperback form. If you see me in the streets, I can sell you some, you know, because I keep books on me at all times. And so I just want to say, hey, if this has been a blessing to you, share this video and also um, check out my YouTube channel. I got uh, many videos that we've done with Forgiveness Fridays and other videos um, on that YouTube channel as well. And also on Facebook, because I do a lot of stuff on Facebook. So I just want to encourage you guys to be blessed, be the miracle, and begin to do the word of reconciliation, which is Father, forgive them, and do the uh, ministry of reconciliation, which is go and do likewise. So I'm going to say forgive them and go and do likewise. Forgive them and go and do likewise, because that is the word of reconciliation. God has given us the word of reconciliation, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And that is for you today, right now, in Jesus' name. I want to say, hey, keep my co-host, Alicia Bennett, in prayer. Um, unfortunately, uh, she couldn't make it with us, but keep her in prayer and everything. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into detail, but I do ask that you uh, align your faith and just pray for her, because right now, man, we all need prayer and pray for her. So I want to say, hey, thank you, Facebook Live family. It has been a blessing, and I am out. Go and be the miracle today. Seriously, man. All right.